Hello, and welcome to my money-making guide for runecrafting. This guide aims to go over the specific items and unlocks you're going to want to have, as well as the specific methods such as abyssal runecrafting and combination runecrafting. On screen now should be a table of contents, so you can skip around to whatever part of the video you actually feel like watching. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. So here are all the important and generally useful item unlocks that you're going to want to have to be able to make a good amount of money doing ring crafting. I'm not going to waste your time by reading every single thing on the screen. I wrote pretty much all of the pertinent information for all of these items, so if you want to read more about them, you can just pause the video at any time. Although everything on this list is important to making a good amount of money doing runecrafting, the things I have to stress as the most important would be the invention outfits, all of the rune pouches, and the highest tier abyssal familiar you have available to you. Having all of these will allow you to carry 103 rune essence per inventory instead of only 28, which is a massive increase. Additionally, things like the runecrafting potions will allow you to reach higher tiers of rune multipliers, which I will explain later on but essentially it just means that you're going to get more runes every time you craft some, and at level 99 runecrafting, if you use the extreme runecrafting potion, it will boost your runecrafting level by 17, which will basically change your chance at making double blood runes from about 17% chance to 30% chance, which again is a pretty big increase. In terms of quest unlocks, the only one I would say is pretty much a hard requirement is unlocking the abyss, but thankfully it is only a mini quest but you're going to have to unlock it. If you want to make any kind of decent money, you're going to have to go through the Abyss for the most part. Uh, for the different runecrafting altars to unlock, the only one that matters a whole lot is going to be the Blood Altar. The other ones I'm listing because I don't see a reason not to. Uh, I know the Soul Altar can kind of make some good money, but it's a lot less than just active runecrafting is. And of course, if you complete Heroes Welcome, it's just going to be a flat 5% more runes across the board for everything you make, which is really damn useful. And last up we have the Nexus mod and Pouch Protector Archaeology Relics. Nexus mod is pretty useful if you're doing Abyssal Crafting because it'll put you in the center of the Abyss every single time, which will speed up your runs dramatically. And the Pouch Protector, um, you should just always use it if you have it unlocked. The peace of mind that you're going to get, as well as the money and time you'll save by not having to ever repair your pouches, cannot be overstated. Especially because the massive rune crafting pouch cannot be repaired. It will degrade to dust, and this will stop it from doing that. Next up we have some of the more specific unlocks if you're trying to target a certain type of rune, such as the Mauritania Legs and the Explorer's Ring. They give a 10% increased chance to craft an additional rune per essence that you use. This does not necessarily mean that you're going to craft 10% more runes. It means out of all of the essence that you bring, 10% of that will become an extra rune, so if you bring 100 essence with you, you should expect about 10 extra runes. There's also the elemental or the catalytic anima stones. These are essentially stone spirits, but for runecrafting. What they do is they will increase your rune multiplier by 2 for the appropriate rune, and they are used for every single essence that is converted into a rune. So if I bring 100 essence with me and I craft it, it'll use 100 anima stones. The Elemental Stones work with the Air, Water, Fire, and Earth runes, while the Catalytic Stones work with literally every other type of rune in the entire game. It is important to note that the boost these things provide is added after the boost from the Power Burst of Sorcery, meaning that it will not double the effects of the Anima Stones, they are added afterwards. The Arcane Elements perk for your Arcane Apoterosaur within your player-owned farm will increase your rune multiplier when making Elemental runes. This is semi-useful for other elemental runes, but for the most part you're only going to use it for water runes, as the amount of those that you can shit out at once is absurd. And you'll see that later on when I show the water rune uh, crafting run. Additionally, you can get the Evil Dave Spellbook, which will allow you to chip Lumbridge Teleport tabs, which when chipped will place you right next to the water altar, so you can just get there way fast and going through the abyss. If you decide to make combination runes, which are actually not only surprisingly profitable, but surprisingly accessible for lower level runecrafting players, you want to use the Binding Necklace in the Magic Imbue spell from the Lunar Spellbook. The Binding Necklace has a unique quirk to it, to where it has 15 charges on the necklace, and that's shared across all of the necklaces, so if I pull out a separate one from my bank or I get one from a different player, it will still have the same number of charges as the last necklace that I equipped. When it runs out, it is destroyed, but it does not destroy the rest of the necklaces that you have in your bank. Last up we have some of the extra unlocks that have some varying degrees of utility. Um, the Totem of Summoning is the first one. 
it will increase the length of your familiar so you don't have to refresh your familiar pouch in the middle of the run because the room crafting familiars only last for 48 minutes instead of over an hour like most familiars do you got your standard mobility stuff surge double surge dive bladed dive etc and then the mobile perk or the shadows grace archaeology relic so you can half the cooldown on surge escape dive bladed dive and barge we also have things like the Catalyst Fragment and the Wilderness Sword 3, which aren't really too useful these days because the Archaeology Relics do exactly what they did but better, but they're still an option if you don't have the Archaeology Relics or you just don't want to use them for whatever reason. And finally we have the Demonic Skull, which gives you more XP when runecrafting through the Abyss, and it also gives you a higher chance to get Abyssal Thread than you normally would when going through the Abyss. Uh, the caveat to this is that it forces you into PvP and there is no confirmation message. If you load this thing from the bank, you don't even get a pop-up that says, hey, you're opting into PvP, there is no kind of notification, so just be aware of that. If you want to get the most money per hour, you're gonna have to use this because the Abyssal Thread is worth quite a hefty amount. And in all honesty, it's not super bad these days, especially after the Wild Industry work, there aren't nearly as many people PKing Runecrafters and it is incredibly easy to avoid them, especially with something I'm going to show in the uh, avoiding PKing section. So moving on to the rune multiplier, this is something that's going to dictate how many runes you're going to get per craft, and this is based upon your actual rune crafting level. As you can see here, and by a formula they've listed at the bottom, you can still craft runes at a higher multiplier, even if your level doesn't actually meet the requirement. It'll actually scale up linearly from 0 to 60% based on level within that range. The multiplier itself is actually extremely straightforward. You just multiply the amount of essences that you're crafting by the actual multiplier that coincides with your level. So if I'm level 99 rune crafting, I will always craft at a minimum 6 water runes per essence, and I'll have a chance at being able to craft 7. And this is why the rune crafting potion is actually useful, because it will allow you to boost to a higher level, not only to craft runes that you otherwise wouldn't be able to, but also to reach higher tiers of rune multipliers that even at 99, you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. And the last thing that I have to add is at the very bottom I've listed a formula to be able to calculate your percentage chance at crafting a double rune. You can pretty much use this if you're unsure or if you want to put a little bit extra effort to figure out what the most profitable rune to be crafting at your level would be. Just for the sake of convenience for the actual calculations and the numbers I've plugged in, I'm assuming you have 99 rune crafting and you're using an extreme rune crafting potion. But again, depending on your level, you can just swap the numbers out to whatever is more applicable to you. When it comes to avoiding player killers, there's a few things you can do. You have to excuse the footage. I was not able to get organic footage of a player killer. I had to enlist up one of my clanmates because PvP is so dead in this game that after about 8 hours of trying to runecraft on World 2 with the explicit purpose of getting killed, it just wasn't happening. So here are the things that you can use to kind of avoid PKers much easier, which is namely just the Phoenix Necklace and the Ring of Life. Uh, you can get a little fancier with it by casting Immortality with the Defender and by having some kind of means to keep your adrenaline at 100%. But I wouldn't go out of your way to unlock that stuff if you don't already have it for this. The Phoenix Necklace should be just fine. Generally what you're going to do if you come across a PKer is you're going to just use Freedom as soon as you get stunned by them. And then after you use freedom, you're going to use anticipation and just try and surge back towards the wilderness wall. If you have immortality, I would cast immortality after you cast freedom, just so you don't get stunned. As I stated earlier, especially after the wilderness rework, there aren't nearly as many people trying to PK anymore. And especially runecrafters of all people, it's not really that profitable these days. And with a phoenix necklace, and if you have a defender to cast immortality with, it becomes nigh impossible to kill you in the like 20 seconds it takes you to run back to the wilderness wall. So here are the various different inventory setups that I use for the different types of rune crafting. I know for the combination runes, I specifically listed a second inventory setup for low levels, and that's because I explicitly want to show that you can actually still make a reasonable amount of money on a fresh account with as low as level 6 rune crafting. The inventory setups are all largely the same with a few minute differences. For the Abyss Rune Crafting, we're taking with us the Demonic Skull for the extra XP and chance at magical threads. We're also bringing with us the Phoenix Necklace and the Ring of Life, just in case we come across a PKer. 
For water rune crafting, we're going to take with us some elemental anima stones for the extra water runes every time we craft some, as well as the Evil Dave spellbook for the fast teleports to the water altar. For the high level combination rune setup, we're going to bring with us the Steam Battle Staff so we can cast the Magic Imbue spell from the Lunar Spellbook. This will stop us from needing to have a talisman in the inventory, so we just save an extra inventory space. Additionally, you also need to have some Astro Runes in order to cast this spell. I am carrying these within my large rune pouch, which goes into my ammo slot, which is not the same thing as the essence pouches. But if you don't have a rune pouch for this, just spend an extra inventory slot, it's going to be worth it. We're also bringing with us the Binding Necklace for the 100% success chance at crafting combination runes, and the Evil Dave Spellbook so we can have a faster teleport to the Water Altar, because right now, Mist Runes are the best combination rune to make. For the low level combination rune setup, it's made to have the lowest possible requirements, so for this we're going to be bringing a wicked hood with us and using a water or talisman on it. In order to access any runecrafting altar, you have to have a talisman in your inventory, but if you're wearing the wicked hood, you can use a talisman on it, and it will automatically allow you access to that altar while you are wearing the wicked hood, and you can do this for every single talisman in the game. Additionally, we're going to be bringing with us the binding necklace, because it's going to give us the 100% success chance at crafting combination runes. You can get the small rune pouch by completing the Enter the Abyss mini quest, but it is not required. For your action bar setup, this is the one that I like to use. To my knowledge, this is the fastest possible one with the least number of button presses required, but I'm not quite sure. If you have a better one, feel free to leave it in the comments. The way this one works is you go and you fill your small, medium, then large pouch, grab essence from your familiar, fill your giant pouch, partially fill your rune crafting outfit, load your preset, completely fill your runecrafting outfit, and then fill your massive pouch. So that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. If you bind your keybinds as numbers instead of letters like I have here, it is loading your preset, hitting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, loading it again, hitting 6 and 7, and then loading it a last time, and you're done. And here's a clip of me doing it in real time. You see I'm going to load my preset for my bank and just hit all the numbers in sequence. Load it a second time, hit him again, and load it a third time, and I'm off. It takes me less time to load my preset and fully fill it than it does to explain what the hell is going on. So Abyssal Rune Crafting is pretty simple, and I'm sure everybody's seen it a million times, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in Edgeville, load my preset and fill my pouches, and then I'm going to surge to the Wilderness Wall. Once I hop it, I'm going to surge again, then blade a dive and teleport via the Zambrak Mage to get to the Abyss. Because I have the Nexus mod relic, I will arrive in the center of the Abyss every time, and from there I'm just going to run towards the Blood Altar and enter it. I use my Power Burst and then craft my runes for that sweet double rune multiplier. Then after that I'm going to teleport with the Wilderness Sword back to Edgeville, run to my bank, load my preset, and do all of that all over again. One thing you can do to speed this up slightly is by using Barge on the men near the Wilderness Wall. I don't typically do this because I feel like it's way too sweaty for such a minimal time save, but, you know, knock yourself out if you want to do it. One thing to keep in mind though is that both Dive, Surge, and Blade of Dive all share a cooldown with each other while you're in the wilderness and toggled for PvP, but because the first tile after the wilderness wall does not actually count as being a part of the wilderness, this restriction does not apply there. Meaning if you surge on that tile to get into the wilderness, they will not share a cooldown and then you can blade a dive immediately afterwards. For making water runes, instead of going to the abyss, we're going to be just teleporting straight to the water altar by using the chipped lumberage teleport tabs in Evil Dave's spellbook. By doing it this way, we can save over 10 seconds compared to running it through the abyss. While this may not sound like a lot, when your runs are only taking 25 to 30 seconds, that 10 seconds adds up extraordinarily fast. After we teleport into the altar, we're going to craft our runes, and then use the max skill teleport to get back to a bank quickly. If you don't have the max skill teleport, it's not a problem. The Wars Retreat teleport works just as well, it is only very marginally slower, so you shouldn't have any problems using that instead. Like I was saying earlier in the video, the amount of water runes that you can shit out doing this is absurd. I can get on average 25 second runs, and I can craft over 1170 water runes on average every single run. With a good setup, this is actually, in many cases, more money per hour than running it through the Abyss, and in all cases it's at least competitively viable with it. I personally like doing water runes like this more than just running blood runes through the Abyss, because a lot of the time blood runes have difficulty selling, and if I'm running waters through the Abyss, I might as well just be doing them through the spellbook. And lastly, we have combination runes. I'm going to show the high level setup before I show the low level setup. 
For the high level setup, it's going to look near identical to water runes, and that's mainly because, at least at the time of recording this, mist runes, which you can make at the water altar, are the most expensive type of combination rune, so we're going to make those and double down on the faster banking from the water altar trips. The difference between this and water runes is that when you get inside of the altar, you're going to cast the magic imbue spell from the lunar spellbook, and then you're going to use your air runes on the water altar. If you do not use the air runes on the altar and you simply craft at it, it'll make water runes instead of the combination runes, so make sure that you do that. If for whatever reason in the future mist runes are no longer the most profitable combination rune to be crafting, simply just use the abyss method and bring a similar inventory setup. Let's say hypothetically dust runes become the best, then just bring air runes to an earth altar and craft there. The process for crafting combination runes remains the same at every single altar, it's just what runes you bring and what altar you go to are going to vary slightly. For the low level setup you will also be creating mist runes at the water altar. This is for a number of reasons, not only because it is currently the most money, but also because there is a bank at Shattered Worlds really close to it, and mist runes are the lowest level combination rune, where you only need to be level 6 to make them. The preset is as I showed earlier, you're going to bring your air runes, your air talisman, and your small rune pouch if you have it, along with your wicked hood and your binding necklace. You're going to exit from the bank, if you have surge unlocked you can use that to go a little bit faster, and you're just going to walk towards the water altar. Once inside you're going to use your air runes on the water altar and it's going to create your mist runes, and that's pretty much all you got to do. Once those are made, you just exit the altar and make your way back towards the bank. Doing a run like this, I was able to complete one in about 45 seconds, which would equate to about 80 runs an hour. As I said earlier in the video, this is an extremely good way to make money as a low level player, because you can get into this with as low as level 6 runecrafting and no other quest requirements or unlocks. Even with no unlocks, you can get over 5 million GP an hour this way. Which I'd say for only having a skill at level 6 is pretty damn good. So that's pretty much the extent of this guide. If you want to stick around, we're going to talk about how much money you can expect per hour by doing each of these methods. So there's a lot of things on screen here, but nothing is really too complicated. In the top, I'm pretty much just listing the items I'm using and the unlocks that will increase the amount of runes you're going to make, as well as the price of each of the relevant consumables or just the upfront cost of some of the items you're going to be used to help increase the amount of runes you make as well. Something to make note of is that the prices I'm listing here are going to differ greatly from what the wiki states in their money making guides, and that's because the wiki consistently overestimates the amount of runes that you're going to be making every time you craft them. Something is wrong with the calculation that they use on the actual calculator. I can tell this from not only manually calculating it out myself, but also by doing dozens of hours of rune crafting and just the averages that I'm getting just do not line up with what the wiki states. This can be further corroborated by going to the talk page for the Blood Runes money making guide on the wiki. There's a few different posts detailing how it just doesn't have accurate numbers. Aside from that, this is your expected profit per hour from the three different methods that I showed, and this is actually your net profit. I've gone and calculated out the cost of using things like Anima Stones, how much the Pure Essence costs using Power vs. Sorcery. All of that I've already calculated out for you, so this is just your net profit. Two things to keep note of is that you can actually make more money than this per hour if you're going a bit faster. I worked with 30 and 40 second runs for water rune and blood rune runs to the abyss respectively because they're just easier to work with mathematically and because you don't need to try as hard to get them, but personally I can get about 25 second runs for water runes and about 35 second runs to the abyss. So again, you can make this faster, you can get more money than I'm listing here, but if you want to do that you're going to have to try a bit harder. Another thing is that I traditionally have had issues getting both blood runes and mist runes to sell at GE value, even when leaving in the sell offers overnight. So if you're going to do those two methods, just bear in mind that there is a possibility that you will not get the expected profit. But with all of that being said, I've really got nothing else. If you think I missed something, or you want to add on to this, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Outside of that, that's all I've got. Thank you for watching, and you guys have fun.